Picture this, it's the 1970s, afros, bell bottoms and of course circuit racing is going crazy in the country. Brands such as Opel, Ford and BMW are all competing against one another and the age-old saying remain true. Race on Sunday, sell on Monday. And that's why we're here today, because we've been given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to drive one of the most memorable cars of that era, the BMW 530 MLE. So the reason why this vehicle exists is because in the 70s, there was the modified saloon series, which was extremely popular. But in order for manufacturers to compete in this series, they needed to produce and sell at least 100 examples of the road-going versions based on the race car. So BMW created just over 100 of these road-going examples based on the 530 MLE race vehicle. And what a success this vehicle was. In fact, when this vehicle started racing in 1977, it won 15 of its 15 races, and it went on to win three championships between 1977 and 1979. So this is no regular BMW E12 that you're looking at here. Instead, us as South Africans believe that this is the original BMW M car. Internationally, many people will tell you that the M1 is the original M car, but this is the first BMW to have the M designation stamped on its chassis. And it has all the motorsport components from the race car put onto this road-going version. So us as South Africans, we'll take that for ourselves. So we've got it on good authority that there's only seven examples left in the world of this original lightweight production run of this car. So BMW have allowed us to actually drive this vehicle, but in order for this car to leave this premises, we need to have security with us. So I guess I know what it feels like to be a politician, a politician driving a 530 MLE. No pressure. So automatically I am transported to the 1970s and this is essentially ground zero, the 530 MLE. And I must say, the experience is very analog. <laughs> the first thing you notice is that you're slightly off center in your seating position. But there's something about old BMWs and even driving new BMWs now, the characteristics of how these cars feel still remains the same. You know that you're in a BMW when you're in this vehicle. So engine-wise, we are working with a tweaked version of BMWs. Sorry, don't mind me as I try to get a gear. <laughs> when last did you have a sticky gearbox like that? <laughs> There's so much character with cars like this. So like I was saying, we've got an inline six-cylinder engine, three liter capacity, it produces 147 kilowatts and 277 newton meters of torque. And that doesn't seem like much, but in the 70s it was a lot. So much so that this car won a lot of races. And if you think about it, 147 kilowatts is still relevant today because a car such as a Polo GTI still offers 147 kilowatts. So you can imagine when a car has this kind of power 40 years ago, it was a big deal. This car also features quite a quirky gearbox. It's got what they call a dog leg first gear, which is at the bottom left as opposed to the top left. And it gets quite confusing because each time you set off on a set of lights, you think that you're actually in second gear, but you're actually in first. But it also gets tricky when it comes to downshifting because you need to be careful not to downshift into first gear as opposed to second gear like you do in a normal car. So it's a well-known fact that South Africa has made some special BMWs over the years. Think about the 325iS, the 333i, the 733, and of course this. But it's quite interesting that this vehicle is not really spoken about, you know, when it comes to popular culture. Most people often refer to the Kusheshe. We speak about even the 733 more than this. But this car is actually so important for BMW M as a whole. It's amazing how BMW South Africa has, in a sense, paved the way for modern BMWs today. And you can feel it in a car such as this. 